The curse of the Pharaoh's expansion for Assassin's Creed Origins has been out for a good few days now. I've played a solid 10 hours or so, I've played through the entirety of the main story and all the fun side quests, there's still plenty to do in the open world, but I'm in a very comfortable position now to provide an educated review. So here you have it, the Curse of the Pharaohs DLC review. Obviously, I'd like to issue a quick spoiler warning before we get into anything, but now that's out the way, let's get into the review. First thing I'd like to talk about is of course the main story. Initially, Bayek is sent to Thebes to locate a relic. When Bayek arrives, he's immediately thrust into a fight with the shadow of a long fallen pharaoh, which is described as the Pharaoh's Curse. Bayek quickly draws the connection between the relic and the pharaoh's curse, explaining all the strange happenings in Upper Egypt. Bayek spends the entire main story treating the symptoms of the relic's illusions while trying to figure out who's causing it in order to treat those symptoms, i.e. the shadows of the fallen pharaohs appearing and causing chaos, attacking anybody in sight. Bayek enters each individual pharaoh's tomb, enter their afterlives, and fight these pharaohs in the afterlife, lifting the curse and supposedly putting them to rest. The story provides a sense of mystery. You're just as unsure as to what's going on as Bayek is. The sense of mystery really hits home because that's something that I feel made Assassin's Creed 1 and 2 feel so special. Furthermore, the ending of the story is satisfying but definitely does not feel like an end to Bayek's journey. Neither does the Hidden Ones DLC, furthering my belief that Bayek both needs and deserves a sequel. On the topic of Bayek, his character continues to shine in the curse of the pharaohs. He's still the same intelligent, friendly and at the same time petrifyingly scary man that he's always been. Although we see him getting wiser to the power of the pieces of Eden which shows development. Abu Bakr Salim has really nailed this character in the main game, The Hidden Ones, and now The Curse of the Pharaohs too, and I can comfortably say that he's my favourite Assassin's Creed protagonist since Ezio. If Bayek were to have a sequel or even a trilogy, I feel as if he'd be able to challenge even that. Moving on, for a DLC, the open world is huge. I'd say the Upper Egypt map alone is about three times the size of the map of The Hidden Ones DLC. On top of that, there are the four afterlife regions, which, when added up, probably make the total world size for the DLC alone roughly four times the world size of the Sinai Peninsula in the Hidden Ones DLC, which, for an expansion, is huge. Outside the main story, there are plenty of side quests to do, both in Upper Egypt and in the afterlife areas, as well as new boss fights, treasure locations, enemy camps, animal layers, and more, which makes for plenty of hours worth of side content. The DLC also utilizes its mystic elements to help define its side quests from the side quests of the main game. The side quests Quests also fit comfortably within the main story. You never feel like you're taking yourself out of the main quest to do the side quest. If anything, I felt as if I'd be rushing it if I just did the main story because many side quests just presented themselves to me, and some even intertwined conveniently with where I needed to go for the main quest. This made the side quests feel natural within Bayek's journey in the DLC, which makes them 100% worth doing. The afterlife regions are beautiful and unique, all feeling weird and more than mortal in their own glorious ways. These regions are definitely worth exploring and can be visited at any time, no matter where you are in the story. Although, to be fair, I would recommend levelling up before going to some of them, because they're all initially leveled to the level required to do the quest that takes you to them. These regions aren't just a means to an end within the main quest, they have their own stuff going on. So definitely don't leave these places without exploring them first, or without the intentions of coming back. As for the Pharaoh boss fights, they're definitely more challenging than anything we've seen in Assassin's Creed Origins so far. The Pharaoh boss fights aren't too difficult however, once you know what you're doing. On hard mode, the pharaohs do a lot of damage with one or two hits, almost completely depleting your health, meaning you can only really afford to get hit if you're on full health. All the while they can absorb a lot of damage, but these boss fights in the open world are timed and you have to balance care with haste, meaning a solid tactic is essential. But if you figure out their attack patterns, it becomes a game of muscle memory, meaning that the challenge fades once you get used to how each pharaoh attacks. If you don't have weapons that give you health on hit, you're going to find these bosses harder regardless. So as far as the pharaoh boss fights are concerned, challenge is definitely present, but not necessarily as much in the open world as long as you know what you're doing. In the afterlives, pharaoh boss fights, they're not timed so you can take as much care as you want, however the pharaohs do deal a lot of damage and because they're more powerful in their afterlife, they can absorb a lot of damage. But if you dash away, they won't stay away, they'll probably charge at you 
so you kind of have to come up with a tactic that doesn't have you dawdle for too long yourself. But like I said, the boss fights aren't necessarily too hard once you know what you're doing, but because they do present some challenge, it makes for quite a fun experience. But once you defeat them in their afterlives, I've noticed that they do not pop up in the Upper Egypt regions anymore, at least as far as I'm aware. So if you haven't fully upgraded your gear by this point and you need to find some shards of the star, you have to go into the afterlives and hunt the giant scorpion things. So it's not like you can't get the shards of the star once the pharaohs disappear. Moving on just for a really, really brief point, the DLC shows us even more ancient Egyptian mythology, which makes for an interesting silver lining to this mystical based Assassin's Creed experience, which does actually lead into a criticism I have had for the entire game. As much as the Discovery Tour was fun, I feel as if they could have just added a database to the main game as well. That would have made the Curse of the Pharaohs mystical elements and all that Egyptian mythology a little bit more learnable, I suppose is the word I'm going to use. And when I say the Discovery Tour was fun, I mean I spent three fucking hours just to get a white Senu skin. I'm a sad fuck. Another thing that the Curse of the Pharaohs expansion did right was the fact that it had its own soundtrack. If you don't remember back to my Hidden Ones review, I mentioned how it would have been better if the DLC had its own soundtrack. Well, The Curse of the Pharaohs does have its own musical score, at least to the point where it's noticeably different. It sets a good tone for the DLC, and it fits with all the mystical elements and so on and so forth. As far as criticisms for this DLC go, I'm quite stumped with things to say. However, I would say that with the greater quest mass, there are quite a few rescue missions. Also, when in the afterlives, and there are the Anubis gods all over the place, when you engage them, sometimes they will say things that regular Garns will say, but with their deep demonic voices. And that sometimes removes the gravitas from the fight, which is funny and unintended. But if there's one thing you've noticed from the two criticisms I just gave, they're both incredibly minor. All in all, the Curse of the Pharaohs DLC is incredible. I absolutely love this DLC. There are plenty of hours of questing, bosses, treasure locations, and all that good stuff to do. The DLC is more or less the same quality of the Hidden Ones DLC, except it's on a larger scale. Seemingly, I'd say three to four times the size. This is my favorite DLC in any Assassin's Creed game, and honestly, it's one of the best DLCs that I've ever played in anything. For the sole purpose that I didn't stop loving it from the moment I started to the moment I finished and then some dossing about afterwards. The Curse of the Pharaohs is worth every last penny of the $20 asking price, meaning I fully recommend it to anyone who played Assassin's Creed Origins and wants more content. Considering how I can barely floor this DLC, and that I loved it all the way through, I'd say that as far as DLCs go, this is what a 10 out of 10 DLC looks like. The Curse of the Pharaohs is a bang on top quality DLC. Obviously it's not quite as good as the Blood and Wine expansion for The Witcher 3, but imagine that as an above and beyond what's expected for top quality DLC, so I truly feel as if the Curse of the Pharaohs is incredible. I find it weird that my two favourite Assassin's Creed DLCs were the Hidden Ones and the Curse of the Pharaohs, the two Origins story expansions. It just shows the care that's gone into Assassin's Creed Origins and hopefully will go into every future Assassin's Creed major instalment. For me, Assassin's Creed Origins has been overall an incredible comeback, and the Curse of the Pharaohs has just amplified that. Hopefully Assassin's Creed sticks to this level of quality and above and doesn't fall back into fatigue with the next major instalment, whenever that may be. But anyway, thank you all for watching this, this was my Curse of the Pharaohs review. I hope you all enjoyed, be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share, let me know what you think about the DLC down in the comment section, and I will see you all very soon with another video at some point.